things. Um, so to start off, the first question I have for all of you is, what is your favorite candy bar? And this one you can either unmute yourself and just share or put in the chat box. Sneakers? Snickers. What? Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, that's sneakers. a good one. Twix. Uh, I love Twix. Love the caramel. Snickers. Okay. Big, big fans of Snickers in the, in the chat. Um, oh, Benita, you put that twice. <laughs> uh, Kit Kat. But you don't like candy. You're you're healthy. You're starting your uh your health off strong, Mavis, by not liking candy. So um let's see. Macy, do you wanna share? I used to eat a lot of Twix love Twix. Milky Way. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a great one. All really great chocolate. Um, so my favorite is this one. It's called Hugh Kitchen. And I don't think it's made it your way yet, but hopefully one day it will. They're new. They're, they've been in the U.S. for a while, but they've recently gotten big. Um, but it's my favorite for a lot of reasons, it tastes really good, but also it's fair trade. So unfortunately, the candy bars that you all shared are not fair trade. And we know that because there's not a fair trade logo on the product. Whereas here, see with the Hue candy bar, there is. So it tastes good. And I know that it's fair trade. And when we know it's fair trade, we know that the farmers who farmed the cocoa um, that is in the chocolate bar were paid a fair deal for the product. Um, and so that whenever I buy anything that's that has cocoa in it and some other items that we'll talk about, I really try to look for this mark. Not to say that you shouldn't try Twix and Snickers and Kit Kats, you should, but, um, but um, today we're talking about fair trade. So I wanted to, to start off telling you about my favorite fair trade candy bar. I hope one day that twi the Twixes and the Snickers and the Kit Kats of the world and the Milky Ways of the world will have a fair trade logo on it. That's my job is to get them um, to source fair trade cocoa. So again, today we're going to talk about um, what fair trade is and um, what it means when you see that mark on a product and um, kind of and how you can contribute to supporting fair trade farmers around the world. Um, okay, so before I just showed it to you, I'm curious if you've ever seen the fair trade logo before and I have a poll. Um, feel free to do the poll or just share. Yes, not sure. All right. Yes. Okay. Great. So you've seen it before. You've had the fair trade cocoa. Um, we have one not sure, but you will have seen it many times by the end of this presentation. Um, and at the end of the presentation, I'll show you some examples of um, fair trade products that you should be able to find in your local grocery store. Okay. Um, so the main items that fair trade farmers are growing and that there's a, a lot of demand for are chocolate, coffee, and bananas. And I, um, on the top are the plants that these items come from. So that's a cocoa pod on the left. Um, these are coffee beans come from the, these coffee trees that um, the red, um, the red is like a, fruit that surrounds the coffee beans and then bananas. Um, and they, 
are often packaged, you know, like a candy bar or be dried beans. Um, bananas kind of look the same, but anyway, these are the top fair trade products um, that that you can find in your grocery stores that are sourced from farmers who are fair trade. Um, so kind of going back to cocoa, it's interesting that 5% of the world's cocoa is traded on fair trade terms. So that leaves like 95% of cocoa that's not fair trade. And that doesn't mean that it's all, you know, um, that it's not the best, but it just means that there's not as much security around the there's not as much support for the farmers um, and they're not necessarily being paid the, a fair deal for their products. So it's my job to expand that amount of cocoa that's being um, traded on fair trade terms. And like I said, one day we would love for the, the chocolate bars that are in this picture to be fair trade. So um, Kind of stepping back, you may have kind of talked about this a little bit when you did the cocoa tasting, but fair, what is fair trade? Fair trade means that farmers were paid a fair price for their products and the products like we just talked about are co cocoa, coffee, and bananas, and that the farmers and the workers on farms have fair working conditions. Businesses that use the fair trade logo um, use that to tell consumers that they're purchasing ingredients from fair trade farmers. So the logo is really important for all of us. When we go into the grocery store, we know where, that the ingredients are coming from fair trade farmers and that those farmers were paid fairly. And then fair trade's vision is a world in which all producers can enjoy secure and sustainable livelihoods, fulfill their potential and decide on their future. So um, a big thing for fair trade is making sure that farmers are able to have the income that they need to make the decisions that they, that they want to make and decide on their future and do what they want to do and build their farm businesses in the way that they want to build them. And that's really important and core to the work that fair trade does. So Kind of like I just said, fair trade puts more money into the hands of farmers and workers, and they set standards at every step of the supply chain so that, again, you know that the chocolate that you're buying in the store is coming from a fair trade farmer, and that all of the steps in between the manufacturers, maybe someone who's importing cocoa into the country or the chocolate bars into the country, all of them have to go through different steps in order to be fair trade. Um, it's it around the world, fair trade is the most recognized um, fair trade label. So fair trade um, has really works to address deep roots of inequality that unfortunately have um, has been in place around the world. So the regions and the producers that we're working with are really those that have been exploited by the trade system. Um, they're all former colonial territories that have histories of racism and systemic poverty. And so fair trade works to focus on these regions with these products um, and in support of the farmers and make sure that they're given a fair deal for their product. Um, and fair trade, while our organization has been around for almost 30 years, fair trade as a system of paying farmers fairly for their products has been going back for um, decades. Um, we trace Fair Trade International as it is today back to um, where churches in North America and Europe were trading goods across um, North America to Latin America, mostly um, in the late 40s. So I 
it's very possible that there was other fair trades before then and, and elsewhere, but that's kind of where we um, focus the history in, at Fair Trade America. Um, so within the global trading system, farmers have to deal with a lot of things that are not necessarily in their control. So one is um, the price of goods changes globally. Um, so it's not always as simple as a, a farmer saying, I want to charge a certain amount for my bananas. There is a global price for bananas that they have to um, sell their bananas at. And sometimes that can be very low and sometimes that can be very high. And um, so that is something that fair trade works to address. Um, farmers are also facing climate change. <laughs> um, they're, you know, uh, times are getting much drier and wetter. So a lot of farmers are facing issues on farm where they don't have enough water or they have too much water, for example. Um, and again, with the payments, they're not necessarily always paid enough to host sustainable practices on farm. And then, um, just so I can see the right side of the slide. Um, and then many farmers and also workers work in poor conditions and just aren't making a high enough income while businesses that are purchasing their product are profiting. So it's really, there's a lot of un, un, uh, not, there's a, not a ton of justice when it comes to parts of the, the trading system, the global trading system. And then fair trade really focuses on the fact that poverty is the root cause of most sustainability issues. So uh, while we do address child labor, malnutrition, um, climate change, um, modern day slavery, deforestation with different program areas, the core of fair trade is again, just providing a fair payment for a product um, and the goal is to, to make it so that people are making enough of an income so that they're not in poverty, so that they're not susceptible to these other um, issues that are very common. So I know you all have been working to learn about the sustainable, the sustainable development goals. Um, and so, I would say that fair trade connects with more than just the ones I have a blue box around, um, but just wanted to highlight kind of the core sustainable development goals that, that we focus on. So there's one, no poverty, um, five, gender equality. We'll talk a little bit more about how fair trade addresses gender equality, um, reduced inequalities, 10, SDG eight, decent work and economic growth, and then climate action. But again, fair trade focuses on many of the sustainable development goals and we report on against them in most of the reports that we create for our fair trade businesses. Um, something that's really cool about fair trade is that Farmers are organized into cooperatives and they are democratically organized so that they all work together to make decisions about how they spend fair trade funding. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that, but I just want to highlight that it's, it's a key tenet of fair trade. And Fair Trade International really is a global system. As you can see on this map um, of, the, of the world, um, that um, we, all of the, all of the um, green countries, green highlighted countries are those where we're really focused on working with businesses to get them to source fair trade products. The producing countries are in blue. So those are those that are farming where the where the products are coming from, where the cocoa, bananas, and coffee are being farmed. 
Um, and some countries have both happening. So we have over, I think it's almost um, 2 million farmers and workers in the fair trade system today. We have almost $900 in um, $900 million provided um, with the fair trade premium. And I'll talk a little bit about the fair trade premium shortly. Um, there's 1,822 producer organizations. So those are the cooperatives where farmers come together to market their, their products. There's more than 35,000 products with the fair trade mark around the globe. We're in 72 countries and territories and fair trade products were sold in, um, sorry, 72 countries and territories are where fair trade producers operate and 145 different countries are where fair trade products are sold. So fair trade is all over the place. And fair trade addresses the three pillars of sustainability. So we invest in people, protect the planet and support um, prosperity. So the ways in which we, or the fair trade system invests, invests in people is um, supporting entrepreneurs on the ground, supporting um, the farm businesses. We're really focused on stopping child and forced labor and promoting gender equality. Um, in terms of protecting the planet, fair trade products are not allowed to have GMOs in them um, or danger or farmed with dangerous pesticides and herbicides. We host um, lots of CO2 reduction projects and we, uh, a lot of farmers use their fair trade premium to um, adapt biodiversity or to build biodiversity um, locally. And then we promote, we provide an incentive for organic farming. And then supporting prosperity. So just supporting income generation. Um, we have a fair trade minimum price, which I'll talk about in just a couple of slides. We have a fair trade premium. Um, both of those are core to fair trade and they just, again, make sure that farmers are being, are provided with um, enough income and are being paid fairly. And um, we have businesses commit to long-term partnerships with farmers so that they're not just purchasing from a farmer for a short amount of time. They're making sure that the relationship is sustainable and more long-term. So as I just mentioned, the fair trade minimum price. Um, the fair trade minimum price is uh, the lowest price that a fair trade farmer will receive for their product. And so, like I said, as global prices go up and down, this minimum price stays the same. And so if a global price decreases too much, the farmer and the cooperative will still receive this minimum price and the price is developed by the fair trade international system. And so we're just, <coughs> excuse me, we're just ensuring that farmers have a safety net when the prices drop. And this provides more security um, for farmers. And then the fair trade premium is again, really important. So it's extra funds on top of the amount that that fair trade minimum price that they're getting for their um, products. And they get to decide how they want to use it and they democratically decide as a cooperative. So um, they can decide, well, I want to build a school or I, the COVID pandemic was really hard on everyone, including farmers and worker, farm workers. So a lot of them decided to use that money for masks and other protective equipment. And sometimes they need income. So that money goes to their families. Um, so it really, it the fair trade makes sure that, that we have no say in where that money goes. It's all the producers and the farmers deciding where that money goes. 
Um, and so in 2019, around 239 million in fair trade premium was paid to farmers and workers globally, which is a really, the, and that number has continued to grow. I'm going to pause there. Are there any questions? No? Is everyone doing okay? Can I get a wave or thumbs up, thumbs down? Is the fair trade premium applied to cool. all the farmers in fair trade or just for a selected group? All farmers in fair trade. So if they're if they're producing a fair trade product and they sell it, they get a premium and they, they get that min, at least minimum price, if not more. The only time they wouldn't get it is if they don't sell it. If that's where it gets complicated, I guess. But if the buyer, if the business who buys it from them isn't going to sell it as fair trade to the consumer, then the farmer doesn't always get the premium. The buyer has to pay for fair trade cocoa, not just conventional cocoa, for example. If the buyer buys fair trade cocoa, they have to pay the premium. But if they buy conventional, then they don't. Does that make sense? Mm. It becomes technical at that level, unfortunately. Any other questions? Okay. Move on. Okay. Um, so there are, we talked about this, but there are over 35,000 products certified as fair trade around the globe. So beyond bananas, cocoa, and coffee, we fair trade certifies flour, sugar, tea, cotton, fruits, herbs, honey, nuts, oils, quinoa. Um, Wine, gold, that's a really unique one. Sports balls, also unique. Um, rice, vegetables, and there's so many more. <clears throat> so um, fair trade's top producing co countries for coffee are in Latin America. So you have Colombia, Honduras, and Peru. And there are 800,000 fair trade coffee farmers in 636 producer organizations ac across the globe. And then on to bananas, the top banana producing countries are the Dominican Republic, Colombia, and Ecuador, also in Latin America. Um, and there are over 115,000 acres of fair trade bananas grown across the globe. And that number is growing. Fair trade bananas are becoming more and more popular. And then cocoa, um, the top cocoa producing countries are Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana, and then Peru. And 80% of the world's fair trade cocoa comes from Cote d'Ivoire. So a lot of the cocoa is coming from West Africa. So what do you think the daily income for the average cocoa farmer is? I have a poll. Ah, aiming low. Okay, everyone thinks it's eight dollars. Um, I think it's actually sixteen. So more than you thought. 
which is if I did the maybe I did didn't do the math right. I don't know. It's two U.S. dollars a day. So that's、um, about sixteen dollars Hong Kong. Huh? Yeah. That's about sixteen dollars Hong Kong. Okay. Okay. Great. I remember that correctly. Yeah. So they make two dollars a day. Or sorry, sixteen Hong Kong dollars a day,、um, which is not. Okay,、um, which is not a ton of money if you think about it to live off of.、Um, can does anyone want to share why they thought it was eight dollars a day? Because、um, usually work like this this has money lower. Yeah, that's right. Anyone else? At a moment, I thought it was sixteen, but I changed. You were close. Yeah. So it's it's not again. It's not a lot to live off of, and、um, so our goal at Fair Trade is to raise those、um, incomes so that it is there is more.、Um, Daily income and yearly income to live off of to buy the things that people need to buy and to do the things that people need to do、um, to live they the life they want to live. Oh, and everyone collected <laughs> eight. Okay. So I'm gonna try to play the video. Please tell me if it doesn't work, and we can I can just send it out later.、Um, but this is a really great video、um, of women farmers in Cote d'Ivoire telling their fair trade experience. It should work. Let's see. Let's see if I can. Okay, I'm just trying to open. I'm gonna open. Um, YouTube. Am I still sharing my screen? No, I'm not. Okay. Um. Can you see my screen now? Okay. Let me know if you can hear this. You can hear it. Il y a des familles qui ne sont pas prêts aussi à donner la forêt aux femmes, parce qu'ils disent que la femme va se marier, va aller travailler avec son mari là-bas. Quand tu, tu travailles pour ton mari, le champ est fait avec le monsieur, mais à la fin de l'année, on n'a rien. Avec ton propre chien, tu peux t'épanouir. Tu peux être autonome. Mon cacao, c'est mon chien à moi. C'est pas pour mon mari, c'est pour moi. Je vois que Fatou nous aide beaucoup dans la cacao culture. Moi, par exemple, moi, en tant que secrétaire SG des femmes, je, je compte faire une maison. Même si c'est deux chambres salon, c'est mon souhait. Nous, on veut 
chacune d'entre nous avoir notre liberté, avoir nous-mêmes nos propres maisons. Nous construisons des grosses maisons et puis dormir dedans à l'aise avec nos maris et nos enfants. Were you able to follow along with the subtitles okay? Yes. Oh, good. Um, what did you think of Rosine and her story? She is determined, yeah. Yeah, I love that she is, yeah, she is nice. We love Rosie and Story at Fair Trade America um, because it she is doing so much in her cooperative and it is not as common for a woman to be so independent and um and society allowing her to have her own house, to have her own farm. So it's really great when women are given that opportunity because communities do better um, and kids do better. So um, anyway, I'm glad you got to see that and it worked. So I'm gonna share my screen again. Okay. Um, so fair trade has beyond the fair trade minimum price and the premium fair trade also um, hosts several many different programs and one of those is the gender leadership school and fair trade hosts this really um, around the world and in, in many communities. Um, and it's a way for women to have additional education from the fair trade system. Um, there's training and there's mentoring. Um, and, and from the school, um, they found that women have improved management skills and they take on voluntary management roles in the organizations and their communities. So Rosine um, is one of the leaders of the Women's Society. Um, and, and so there's lots of different roles like that that come in the fair trade system. And so the Gender Leadership School gives women um, background information and just support to, to take on those types of roles, which is really cool. Um, and it's just kind of two quotes from, one is from Rosine, we just saw her um, on the right. And she says, we use fair trade premium to build for the future. And we'll, in a couple of, um, the next couple of slides, we'll show how some cooperatives are using the fair trade premium. Um, and then Juliana Soko, uh, who was a graduate of the Women's School of Leadership, and she's also a cocoa farmer in Cote d'Ivoire, said that the school helped her change her vision. My vision changed. I realized how much I could do for my cooperative. So really, um, really, have, they're now having the opportunities to, to get more involved and have more of a say in the businesses that they're a part of. So Rosine is a member of Kayat. It's a cocoa and a coffee farming cooperative in Cote d'Ivoire in um, West Africa. It was formed in 2010 and they were certified as fair trade 10 years ago. When they were formed, there were 283 members, but by 2020, they had over 3000 members. So a lot of farmers have been interested in, in joining the cooperative in the last 10 years and they've spent their premium. So that additional funding that they're getting 
um, that they can decide that the cooperative can democratically decide how they want to use it. They're spending it on um, development of a woman's society in the community. Um, they've constructed three nursery classrooms. There's a radio kayak, which is really cool. It's a way for um, farmers and for, for people to share information with farmers who might be in more remote areas. Um, they've built warehouses to process and store cocoa, and that's really important in securing your cocoa and, and keeping it um, for as long as you need to keep it. Um, they've been able to buy new trucks um, and also have built solar panels. Um, one up, and then apparently one of the solar panels are enough to um, run their water pump system as well as um, there's a, a community television that they can watch with the energy from the solar panels. So, and then um, another example. Cubana is based in Panama and there's 250 members. Um, and they, um, they have a lot of work in the environmental field that they're doing. So they're working to reforest. So they're planting a lot of trees. That's what this picture is. Um, they're doing a lot of environmental education and the, this co-op is in a, like near a, um, on the ocean um, where there's sea turtles nesting. So there's they're investing in sea turtle monitoring to kind of continue to build the local biodiversity um, of their region. Um, and one of the um, co-op members, Quintero, I had had a last name there, but it fell off, I guess, um, said that they planted 13,000 trees that are native to Panama in the area because of the premium, which I think is really cool. That's a lot of trees to plant. And they're working really hard to preserve the, the local environment, in addition to all the work that they're doing as farmers. So I'm curious, now that you kind of have a background on fair trade, what can you do to make a difference in, in the lives of some of these farmers? Sometimes it seems like we're really far away, but there are things that we can do. So I have one last poll for you. And if there's not an answer for you, there, you can unmute yourself and share or put something in the chat. Cool. Um, let's see. I see something in the chat. Buy more fair trade chocolate. Yeah, exactly. So this is a trick question because you can do all these things. Um, but one is like Mavis said, buying fair trade products when you go to the grocery store. So buying that chocolate, coffee, um, if you see bananas and, and other items. Um, tell a friend about fair trade. You can share what you learned today. Kate says, convince people to buy fair trade chocolate and tell them what's good about it. Yeah, exactly. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, you can tell your friends about it. You can tell your family members about it. And you can, there's a lot of information online too that you can learn. So um, I, what's really cool about fair trade to me is that I know that Farmers are thousands of miles away, but there is something that I can do, um, like all of you selected here. There's something that all of us can do to support fair trade farmers. Um, and it really, as shared with some of those examples, it really does 
make a difference. You think it might not, but it does. Um, so I, I like that, that we're all connected in that way. So uh, Benita took some photos for me of fair trade items in your grocery stores. Um, so Grumpy Mule coffee, Machu Picchu coffee, um, and then the Monoprix Bio chocolate and yep. the Monoprix Gourmet. You can find all this in the supermarket, in the maybe marketplace. You can find all these products. And yeah, and you just know that they're fair trade international with the, the mark that's on them. So, and yeah, tell your friends about fair trade, tell your family, and you can learn more at fairtrade.net. So, um, fair trade, since we're an international system, there's an international office um, there in Germany. They run kind of a more overarching website called fairtrade.net. Um, fair Trade America has a website too. It's fairtradeamerica.org. Um, and we have a lot of overlapping stuff, but we also try to write content for the US market. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for coming with your your and sharing your thoughts and your ideas. Um, I'm around if you have any questions or comments that you want to share.